and hello everyone welcome to your first NIM tutorial in this tutorial we'll just be taking a look at installing them and in running a few commands in them getting our hello worlds and comments in and then in the upcoming tutorials we'll be taking a look at some NIM features the standard library some installable modules we can use such as if you want to create a discord bot you can use them scored and so on all right so let's get to installing them now I am on Linux, but if you are on Windows, you can use Windows. And if you're on Mac, you can use Unix. And I believe this supports FreeBSD as well. Then here you go. If you are on Linux, you can just use curl. But if you don't like curl, there's also this tarball you can use. But if you don't like using tarballs either, you can go check here. There's a bunch of other things you can use here on Mac OS to actually give you a few extra things. But here on Arch Linux, it says you can just use pacman-snim. Okay, so you can just use pacman-snim if you want to install it. Otherwise, you could use choose nim. That's actually the recommended way of doing it. Because then you can also switch between different nim versions. Like let's say one project supports this feature in nim, but the other doesn't. Then you might want to switch between the versions. But of course, there's also Debian slash Ubuntu where you can use apt git. There's Docker, if you want to use NIM in a Docker container. FreeBSD, macOS, OpenBSD, OpenSUSE, and Void Linux. Now I already have NIM installed, so I'm not going to be using choose NIM or pacman -S NIM because as you can see, I already have it installed. Cool. Now before we continue to the actual course, let's take a look here at the documentation. There's a lot of things that will be covered here. Because we will actually be doing a lot of the things from the documentation in this course. A lot of people say the NIM documentation is somewhat difficult to understand. I don't find the NIM documentation difficult to understand or read. So I'm going to convert it into bite-sized, easy to understand NIM tutorials. Primarily from the standard library. So if something, if there's something you don't understand and it's from the standard library, then you can actually Go look here and you'll be able to find it. For example, let's go to the math libraries. So here's a bunch of math libraries. Let's say you want to use random. Go in there and here's the NIM documentation. Anything you don't understand, you can also read up here. Now NIM is open source. So if you want to contribute to the NIM community, you could also go to the NIM source code here on GitHub. So on their website, just click on the source here and you'll be able to contribute here. There is a separate NIM community that has made NIM skull. Basically, it was a few people that didn't really like where NIM was going and they created their own NIM, fixing up bugs and whatnot. Currently, I'm pretty sure NIM skull right here. I'm pretty sure NIM skull currently is just NIM, but with a few extra fixes and whatnot. Ah, you can actually take a look here, but their website should look bad as the documentation. Yeah, their website should be fairly similar and whatnot. But if you're one of these, you can also go take a look at NIMSCAL. But I'm just going to cover normal NIM here. Okay, cool. Now let's create our first NIM program. So I'm going to do this in a GUI in a second. We can go to Documents, Tutorials, and I actually already have a NIM here, so I'm just going to create a new NIM. And then I'm going to do NIM, and I'm going to explain this in a second. Now, for those of you who don't have any Linux experience, what I just did is I went into my documents. I have a Toots folder where I have all of my tutorials that I'm teaching. And then here I have a NIM folder. So all I did was I went into the NIM folder. We can create a new file and we can call this main.nim. All right, and then we can open this up in whichever code editor you like. I like using VS Code, so that's what I'm going to use. But of course, you can use Sublime Text, Notepad, whatnot. I'm just going to use VS Code. All right. If you are on Windows, make sure that this doesn't say main.nim.txt. That is something that happens in Windows. If it is saying that, just remove the .txt, so it just says main.nim. Cool. So now we have our first NIM file. Now, before we get into writing any code, I first want to teach you about comments. 
a comment is a line of code that does not get executed by the computer. So when you put a line of code there or a piece of text there, you don't necessarily want that to execute. For example, I am cool. In NIM, this will cause an error because I am cool is not valid commands. But by putting a hashtag in front of this I am cool, you'll see it becomes this nice greenish color. This means that it is being ignored. It is a comment. But on the next line, you can start typing again. Every time you put a hashtag there, that will be a comment. The comment can also be after a command. So anything after a hashtag, that is a comment. This is a single line comment. You also have multi-line comments, which uses these hashtag and then this bracket, square bracket things. Anything inside of this is a comment. So no matter how far down you go, this will be a comment. Even if you put normal NIM code in here, it will not be read by the compiler. And then if you're outside of it again, you can write normal code and it will execute. And then finally, you can also use this card. We'll get later into what this card is. But for now, if you can then create a documentation string like this, and anything inside of this is a comment. Again, outside of it, it's no longer a comment. So these are the three ways you can create a comment in NIM. Now let's write our first line of NIM code. Echo, hello world. This is amazing. So now here we have like a print statement. If we run this, so if we go down here and take note, you can also open up your terminal from inside of VS Code. These two are exactly the same. This one is just outside of VS Code and looks nice. This one is inside of VS Code and doesn't look nice. So I'm going to use the outside one, but they are both the same. I'm just going to say nim c main.nim. This will compile the program. So let's actually go here, nim c main.nim. We'll be taking a look at a bunch of these. If we run this, here we'll get a main. This is an executable, so we cannot just read it, but we can execute it. And there we go, hello world. You also have nim dash r c main.nim. This will compile the program and then run it afterwards for you. So you don't have to do it in two different steps. You only do it in one. Run it, it will compile it, but also run it afterwards. You can also do nim r main.nim. Take note, there's no dash here. It's just nim r. This will compile it, but it will not compile it to this folder. So if I were to delete this and I were to run this, it will compile and run this, but you'll see it didn't create an executable here. Be careful when using this because this is a little bit of a strange method. So some code that you run with this might just not work. We'll get later into why this might not work, but for right now, just take note, this might cause issues. If it does, just instead use this because it will compile it into this folder and then run this executable. And then finally, we can go nim r dash dash verbosity zero hints off. Now, this is just to show you some of the features that the compiler has. Main dot nim. This will turn off all unnecessary messages. So only show the very essential messages that really needs to be shown. As you can see, it doesn't show you all of this. It only shows you this. So that just shows you some of the features you can use with the compiler. You can also use the compiler to compile to JavaScript and C and C++ and we'll later get into actually doing that. But for right now, it is not necessary. We can just continue with NIM. Now NIM is a very flexible and interesting language. So let's show you a few methods you can use to just echo out a few things, just to print a few things. So here we could say, hello dot echo world. And we'll get into why this is actually valid NIM code. 
in a later tutorial, but it is very interesting. So now if we were to say nim our main.nim, we get hello world from both of these echoes, but this one just looks a little bit different. You can also go echo hello world, or if you wanted to, you could just continue with this, say hello world, but then just say dot echo. So this is just because nim is so flexible. So you'll see but all of them show hello world. And then finally, this one is not an echo, but you can use the standard output to also write things to the terminal if you want to. So write into the standard output, hello world. Take note, you don't need any semicolons as you can see here. Do that. And there we go, we get hello world. If you also want a new line, you can just go backslash in and now run it. There we go. Okay, so that's just a few ways you can do hello world in them. Just a little fun fact. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next NIM tutorial.